Coca-Cola started in 1886, went global in 1928, and today it's a beloved icon enjoyed by people all over the world. All the assets and project files are available on my Patreon, the link in the description. For this first clip, I'll start by adding a photo of this city as the background, then change the ration to 16 by 9. Upscale it until it covered the whole frame. Now, extend the duration to 3 seconds. Now, let's add a photo of this man. Place the photo anywhere you like. Now let's add a photo of the very first Coca-Cola bottle. And for the second bottle, we'll just duplicate the layer. And let's reposition the second bottle right next to it. Place the second bottle's layer below the first one so it sits behind it. Next, I'll add a blur effect to the background so we can focus only on the main object. Let's just adjust the settings accordingly. Besides the background, I'll also add this blur effect to the first bottle to create a sense of depth. Make sure the blur isn't too intense. Now, let's apply a drop shadow effect to the photo of the man. First, let's duplicate the layer. Then, move its position slightly to the side. Go to adjust, then set the black and white to the lowest level, and do the same for contrast and exposure to darken the image. Then, also add a blur effect to the shadow layer. And you can also adjust the opacity however you like. So, this is the layout for the first clip. Now, let's insert a photo of the Amsterdam Olympic Stadium, the place where the product was first exhibited internationally. And also a photo of the booth. Now, let's just position all the photos. For the background, I'll just use a solid white color. As for the stadium photo, since it's still in color, I'll turn it into black and white by lowering the saturation. Also, slightly increase the contrast and lower the exposure a bit. Then, I'll also add a drop shadow to the booth photo using the same method I showed earlier. And this is what the layout of the second clip looks like. Now, let's create the layout for the final clip. For the background, I'll use a solid red color. Then, I'll just add a few images of the product cans and arrange them accordingly. And after finishing the layout, I'll now create the timeline animation. First, I'll look for an empty space to make it easier for us to create the timeline. For example, I'll make it in the second clip, but first let's disable the objects by pressing the V key, leaving only the white background. Next, I'll add the timeline lining that we'll be using. Then, add a text layer and change the text color to black. Next, type a single dot, which we'll use as an indicator. And now, you just need to place it right above one of the long lines on this timeline. Next, let's add another text layer, which we'll use for writing the year.
The font I'll use here is League Spartan, extra bold. I'll make it a bit smaller and also adjust the letter spacing. Now, just duplicate the year text to create the other years, position them evenly spaced, and make sure they're aligned above the long line. After that, make sure all the timeline layers are placed below the object layers in the layout. Now, we just need to extend the duration of each timeline layer across all clips. Now select all the layers and then enlarge the timeline. Also, position the years according to their respective clips. Now, let's start animating it. First, add keyframes to each timeline layer, except for the indicator dot layer. For the indicator layer, we can simply lock it so it doesn't interfere with the process. After that, Select all the timeline layers again, then move the playhead to the second clip at your desired duration. Then, simply move the timeline to the next tier. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, do the same for the next clip. and the result will look like this. Now all you need to do is ease the second and fourth keyframes. So, it's gonna look like this. Here, for the transition from clip 2 to clip 3, I'll apply a color change from black to white. First, for each text layer, add a keyframe to the color at the same position as the transition keyframe we set earlier. Now, place the playhead on the next keyframe, then change the color to white. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, repeat the same step to the dot layer. Now, for the line, we'll apply a different step. First, go to adjust, then add a keyframe. Then, move the playhead to the next keyframe, and apply the following settings I'm showing here. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, we're going to create the transitions between the clips. First, Place all the layers from clip 1 above the layers of clip 2.
Then, extend the duration of all the layers so they overlap into the second clip. To make the process easier, I'll first disable the layers in the second clip. Then, add a transform keyframe to the layer you want to transition, with the playhead positioned at the start of the second clip. Here, I'm adding it to the photo of the man as well as its shadow layer. Now move to the last frame. Select both of the layers, then position it to where you want it to disappear. Now, do the same for each layer. So, it's gonna look like this. Now ease the second keyframe on each layer. So, it's gonna look like this. Now, we're going to create the in-transition for the second clip. First, add a keyframe at the beginning of the frame on the layer you want to transition. Here, I'm adding a keyframe to the booth photo layer and its shadow. Then position the playhead at the last frame of the first clip. Select both layers, then position them where they will start appearing. So, it's going to look like this. Now, do the same for the next layer. and it's going to look like this. For the background transition here, I'll use one of CapCut's built-in transitions called Mix. Now, let's move on to creating the out transition. The steps are basically the same as the ones we applied to the first clip. First, move all the layers from the third clip to the very bottom. Then, extend the duration of all the layers in the second clip. And now, you just need to start creating the out transition using keyframes by following the same steps I showed you earlier. So, it's gonna look like this. And just like the last clip transition, you only need to follow the same steps I showed earlier. Let's apply the same transition to the background as well. 
So it's going to look like this. Now we've arrived at the easiest part of this tutorial. In this step, I'm going to apply some effects to make the video look even more interesting. For the first effect, I'll add a subtle camera shake using the play pendulum effect. For the settings, feel free to adjust them however you like or simply copy the exact settings I'm using. For the second effect, I'll add an effect called Wide Angle to expand the frame's perspective. After that, I'll add an effect called Chromatic Quirk. Here, you just need to make a slight adjustment on the lateral slider. Next, I'm adding the Hazy effect, which creates a blur around the edges of the frame. Just adjust the blur intensity so it's not too strong. And the final effect is Lightstream, which adds more dynamics to the video. Here I'm just turning down the glow a bit for the whole video. Next, I'll add two keyframes for the glow at the beginning of the frame. For the first keyframe, I'll set the glow to 100%. After that, ease the keyframe. So, it's going to look like this. After finishing all these effects, now I'll add a grunge texture. Position the grunge texture layer below the effects layers. Now, change the blend mode to multiply and decrease the opacity a little bit. So, it's going to look like this. Now, for the final touch and to make the video more cinematic, I'm going to add black bars using a solid black color. Head over to Mask, select Film Strips, click Reverse, and now just tweak the black bars until they're the size you want. And that's the video for today. I hope this video helped you. Thank you guys for watching and here is the final result. Coca-Cola started in 1886, went global in 1928, and today it's a beloved icon enjoyed by people all over the world.